Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about uh, being addicted to magic. I know some people are very addicted to magic, the gathering. Um, being addicted means, in my opinion, spending your rent money or money for food or jeopardizing relationships because you want to play magic, the gathering, the game or to buy magic, the gathering cards. Now, I know a lot of people, I'm not going to mention them by name. Uh, what you guys don't know is I don't live in Houston, Houston. I work in downtown Houston. Uh, that's where my office is. I guess I have like another conference room in Cyprus. But I don't live live in Houston. I actually live in a small area, uh, a smaller town called Humble. And in that area, people, are, at least the Magic players, are a little different. Um, they love the game of a passion and a lot of times uh, I get approached where or I get a text or something like, hey, I need to make rent. Um, I can, will you buy XYZ magic card for me? And sometimes I'll say yes, sometimes I'll say no. It really depends on you know, my finances as well that month. If I went to Dave and Buster's too much or, I mean, it's again, it sounds ridiculous, but this is actually what's happening. Uh, same with rent. The one thing I can tell you about where I live is there's a payday loan vendor. There's a payday loaner. I, what are they called? Payday loans? Um, but what is the people who are, give them out called? Payday, cash like Cash America and oh, Pawn Stores. Like they, there's a ton of them where I live. I mean, you cannot. I, I, I wish I knew how much, but the density is tremendous, right? Like there's one, like I see one like everywhere I go is I will see a payday um, vendor or loan or and I will see a uh, pawn store and I always see magic and a lot of my friends who are magic players, they, you know, and, and then my local game stores, they buy magic cards for 10% of their Star City game price. That's how they do it. I'm not going to mention names. I'm not going to drop names, but that's the price that most of them have established. 10 to 20 percent, uh, 20 percent being you know more modern or legacy staples, 10 percent being the standard staples, right? And that's just the way it is. Um, so if someone has you know a dark confidant, they can hear which I'm going to talk about later. Dark confidant, I think it's like 42 dollars right now. Let's say, let's say it's uh, dark confidant, let's say it's 40 dollars, let's round down, and they can either get four dollars for that, oh, uh, not four dollars. Oh wow, it's eight dollars, math right? Uh, eight dollars from that from the, either of the two or multiple local game stores. I'm sure that maybe some game store would offer more if they drove into Houston, or they could. I mean, they, I guess you're not going to be able to take it to a payday loan vendor like that's cars. That's but a lot of times um, the people where I live and uh, I've never taken taking a payday loan, but the concept is very frightening. The interest rates are, you know, we're talking about 40, 50% interest, APR, like, it's, it's frightening um, to think about it. And it's because you need to pay rent, you need to pay your uh, auto insurance, you need to pay a lot of stuff that, um, you know, hits at the end of the month. I mean, hits everyone at the end of the month and all that they spent too much money on Magic the Gathering cards. Uh, this has been, I've seen this as a very bad scenario because in Battle for Zendikar, a lot of my friends, they purchased cases so they can get the expeditions. And in the beginning, it was okay because the prices, they held pretty strong. But now they've just dipped down and they're, the demand, at least in my area, is not as high. So you're dealing with a situation where someone purchased a case of magic cards they could not afford but because they were you know hyped if you will by whoever was hyping the cards and now they need to pay rent uh, they need to pay auto insurance they need to pay car they need to pay um, different stuff and right now I'm not buying cards as much or at all uh, mainly because I have way too much of them um, but I will, you know, I will like lend money out and I don't consider it lending money out because I just, the ability, if it's a friend and it's the first time I lend money out to them, fine. You know, I don't need to take collateral, just pay me when you can pay me. 
but um, I don't expect the money to come back, and that's the truth. That's the honest truth about it. Like I don't, I mean, getting payment, but I'm always surprised when they do pay me back. Uh, that's the exception, and that's so I'm okay with that because I know um, I grew up extremely poor, uh, very very poor. And I think on my other channel I mentioned that um, I know I write about it on my blogs. It's a little easier for me to write about than make a video about, and I know what it's like to be, you know, to need money. I know what how hard it is to ask for money, and you know. A, I've seen this more happen now. I think for the Battle for Zendikar, people were buying multiple cases of it, of it, expecting to make money from it. In the first week, you could make money from it, but outside of that, like once it's not at this point in time, opening cases of Battle for Zendikar, you're not you're not going to make money from it, even if you had the ability to sell it. So I feel like it's kind of a, and now they're hyping up off of Geek Watts and things of that nature. Um, when I played Magic, when I first played Magic, uh, I didn't have much money to play with it. And it was a very expensive game. I, at least I believed it was expensive back then. So I can only imagine um, what it's like right now. And I, can, I will honestly tell you that uh, the game is... Uh, that, you know, in marketing, I work in marketing. A lot of it is just hype and it's unnecessarily hype. And it's people who are hyping this product so they can sell you a case when you can't even really afford to pay rent that month. I thought that I would speak out against it because I know probably no one else will. And it's worth me saying what my... Because I right now I have a lot of friends who purchased cases of Battle for Zendikar when they really should have put the money for rent or auto insurance or uh, their payday loans are coming up. And that's something I'm personally experiencing from them. Uh, and, you know, these text messages, sometimes I don't even want to respond to them because, like, I don't know. It's just a tough place for me to be in um, because... I really don't need more magic cards and anytime I give out a loan I'm not I'm not going to give out a loan to someone who I've given money to before and the you know I'm it, it's hard to say yes to one person and not say yes to like multiple people in this case so real life bye guys